Hey folks, David here with another main stage tutorial for you. One of the questions I get asked the most often is how did you learn how to do sound design? Well, I've been using main stage for several years and before that I was an Ableton user and even before that I was using Reason. Uh, so I was sort of familiar with a lot of the basic concepts of synthesis before I downloaded main stage. Uh, but there are some really great baseline resources uh, that you can check out to sort of learn uh, across platforms and ac across software uh, how synthesis works, the principles that it's all built on. And one of the resources that I always recommend to somebody who's first starting out in their journey into sound design is the old 1980s uh, video series, Intro to Synthesis. Uh, this tutorial, there's a three, uh, it's a three video uh, series and it's actually available on YouTube to watch for free. So I'll have a link to the Intro to Synthesis video series in the description of this video. So if you don't know anything about synthesis and you want to understand how it works, knowledge that will apply no matter what software or hardware you're using, then I recommend checking out that playlist. It is the best place I've found to start to get a baseline understanding. Uh, but that's just uh, not specific to any particular software. Uh, people often ask me, how did you learn to use MainStage specifically? Uh, the way that MainStage uh, instrument plugins, MIDI, and audio effects work. Uh, and come together to create a finished preset or patch. And so when I was first starting out, I actually learned a lot from opening up some of the factory presets and then sort of reverse engineering them. I'd turn off one plugin or tweak one parameter at a time and see how it affected the final sound. And sort of tearing those things apart one piece at a time really gave me insight into the reason that the factory preset designers made the decisions that they did and it was really useful for me to be able to store away that knowledge and say, okay, you know, when I want to achieve that sort of sound in the future, I remember that the original preset designers kind of used this plugin or this waveform in this way. And it was really helpful to me. And so what I'd like to do is actually show you how to access the factory presets. In main stage, I'm going to show you how to access the patch presets and then also the channel strip presets. Because MainStage doesn't make it super easy and obvious to find those necessarily. So I just want to make sure that you know how to access them so that you can learn the way that I did, if that sounds like it might be helpful to you. Now there are templates and patches that are done for you. Obviously I'd love it if you checked out the patches and templates available on my website. My Sunday Keys MainStage template is a great place to start. And there are other great content creators out there as well designing awesome done for you resources. But even if you choose to start learning MainStage using uh, Sunday Keys template patches that you've purchased from somewhere else online, it's still a great idea to create copies of those patches or copies of the whole concert and then start to tear them apart to find out how they work. Because then you can tuck that knowledge away in your head and you'll always have it to come back to later when you want to start to express your own creativity and create sounds of your own. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna show you how to access MainStage's factory presets. Let's take a look. All right, folks, so no matter what MainStage concert you open up, this process is gonna be the same. You're gonna be able to access all of the factory patch presets and channel strip presets no matter what concert you are in. So I've got my Sunday Keys template open today, but I'm just gonna add a new patch by hitting the plus button here in the patch list. And I am in edit mode, and that's where we're gonna stay for this whole tutorial. So I'm just going to drag this new untitled patch up to the top of my patch list. And when you have a patch selected in your patch list, it's highlighted in blue when you're in edit mode. And this is where you can actually access all of the patch presets MainStage includes. So to do this, all you do is you go to Instrument, and then here are all of MainStage's patch presets. So they're itemized by uh, type into different folders. So if I wanted to find organs, I could just click on the Vintage B3 organ, and then see all of the organ patch presets. So a patch is a collection of channel strips, right? And workplace assignments, or mappings rather. Um, so when I select any of these presets, uh, it's gonna load up the appropriate channel strip. And you'll see it added one channel strip to this patch, which happens to have the Vintage B3 on it. And it also includes some bus uh, assignments that are automatically brought into your concert. Now this is where you need to be really careful with MainStage's patch presets. Uh, because most of the patch presets include the infamous Space Designer Reverb plugin. So you can see when I added that patch preset here, it brought in two buses, bus six and bus eight. So it just chooses unused buses and automatically loads them into your concert. Now buses all live at the concert level. So I'm gonna go up here to the concert level and I'm gonna find those buses. 
and you can see that they're added in right here. And it actually added three buses to my concert and they all have the Space Designer reverb. The problem with this is that Space Designer really drains your CPU. So what you can do is you can just disable or replace Space Designer with a different reverb plugin. Or if you'd like, you can actually just delete the buses entirely and see what the sound sounds like uh, without any of those bus effects. So I'm just going to send these to none and then we can check out the preset. So pretty cool. But we could choose any of these presets that we wanted. We could grab a marimba. But again, just note, it's going to add buses. Almost all of these patch presets are going to add Space Designer uh, to your concert. And that is really not ideal. But you can check out the patch presets as long as you don't mind cleaning up some of that mess. But here's what I really like to do. I actually like to use the channel strip presets over the patch presets because the channel strip presets don't come with any of those aux buses that will really clutter up your concert level and make your uh, concert less CPU efficient. So when you use a channel strip preset, there's actually less cleanup work to do. So I'm going to go back up here to the concert level and I'm going to delete all of these junk buses that were just added in when I loaded that patch preset. And again, the, those buses are only bad because of the Space Designer Reverb plugin. It's just a CPU hog. Um, so you could leave the buses and just replace uh, silver, uh, the Space Designer Reverb, or you could replace it with a more efficient plugin like Platinum Verb uh, or Silver Verb or a third-party Reverb plugin if you wanted to. Uh, but I just choose to delete them. And if I need those effects, I'll add them at the channel strip level, or I'll make those concert level buses more efficient. Uh, but now I'm going to show you how to uh, access the channel strip presets. So I deleted that channel strip here. Let me just delete this patch and we'll start from scratch. So I'm going to go back up to concert level and I'm going to create a new patch. And then I'm going to hit the plus button over here to add a new channel strip. And I'm, we want to add an instrument channel strip, right? And we just make sure that our keyboard is selected as the MIDI input and that you have the output 1 and 2 selected unless you use more than two outputs in main stage. All right, so I've got a blank channel strip here. So you can see it's floating over the on-screen keyboard, but it's not making any sound, obviously, because there's nothing loaded into the channel strip. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to access the channel strip presets. You just click on the setting area up here at the top. You see where it says setting right there. And from here, you have a drop-down of all of the different channel strip presets you have available to you. And so there's quite a few in here, especially when you get into the synthesizer tab. Uh, they're all itemized by type of sound, so there's all sorts of different channel strip presets. So when you select one, it just takes main stage a second and it loads it up. So it's kind of an interesting sound. So now we can actually start to sort of mess with it and see uh, how it's uh, being uh, affected by the audio effects. This is an easy place to learn about audio effects. So I'm just going to one at a time disable audio effects and see how it changes the sound. You can see when I shut the bit crusher off, we lose all that graininess. Hear that? And I'm going to shut the tape delay off too. And then lastly, the compressor. See, we hear a little bit more attack when we have that compressor shut off. So we can disable those or we can leave them on. You can find out what, what you like. Then I'm going to open up ES2, the actual instrument plugin. And then we can tweak things in here as well to sort of uh, deconstruct them and find out how they work. So we can choose different waveforms here. We can mess with the octaves. We can mess with the filter section. You can add or take out effects, and then you can really mess with the sound in the mod matrix, and you can mess with the amp envelope and all sorts of different stuff. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but the point is that you can really drastically alter the sound and figure out why you're altering the sound, like what changes that you make have drastic impact on the output. 
by just starting with a factory preset and sort of deconstructing it, tearing it apart a little bit. So this is really what helped me to kind of crack a lot of the codes in main stage and learn how uh, the most efficient way was to achieve different sounds that I was hearing in my head and wanted to be able to create for myself. So those are the two ways that you can access MainStage's factory presets. So you can create a new patch and use the patch library browser down here by going to instrument and sorting them by type, but just look out for those automatically added concert level buses that will really make your concert less efficient. So when you add a patch preset, just look out for those buses and clean them up if you need to. And the other option is just to add a new channel strip to any patch, click on the setting area up at the top, and then you can browse through all the channel strip presets here. This is actually my preferred way to go about things. Now let's say that you've made some tweaks and you really like what you've come up with. It's really easy to save this channel strip, channel strip preset. Just click back on the settings area and hit save as channel strip setting. And you can name it, ooh, sorry about that. You can name it whatever you want and then just hit save and it'll automatically save to the instrument section of your channel strip settings. Uh, that's a folder that MainStage creates when you download MainStage. So then you can actually go back to this at any time or view all of the channel strip settings you've ever saved by clicking on setting and then going down to user channel strip settings. You can see that I have a ton of user channel strip settings saved. It makes it really easy for me to go back and find sounds I've already created, uh, use work and creativity that I've already done uh, to help me get new sounds for specific songs or to fit a certain space. All right, folks, that's a little bit about using MainStage's factory presets and how I deconstructed them to learn about a lot of the sound design principles that I could apply when creating MainStage patches. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if it was, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like and commented on the video with something you learned that you didn't know before. If this video was super helpful to you and you want to take an extra step, I'd love it if you shared it with a friend who uses MainStage or with a friend who might be curious about what MainStage is and how it can work for them for the live performances. If you want to, you can also check out all of the free patches and resources available on our website. There's a link to our website in the description of this video. And there's also a link, remember, to that Intro to Synthesis series on YouTube. So I recommend checking out that video series if you want a baseline understanding of the principles of synthesis across all platforms, software and hardware. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day.